Hey, welcome to the channel. Today I thought what we'd talk about is the two-stroke carburetors that you find on your chainsaws, weed eaters, the manis tillers, you know, and what are the differences and what are the serviceable, what does it mean to be a serviceable carburetor and a non-serviceable carburetor, and how you go about adjusting it, when to adjust it, how to adjust it. Stay tuned. Welcome back. My name is Eric, if you didn't already know. And today we're talking about how to service and how to know how to service a serviceable carburetor and how to know the differences between a serviceable and a non-serviceable. So let's start there. The ones I'm talking about are the ones that you're going to encounter on your weed eater, chainsaw, little tillers, anything is two-stroke, you know. How you adjust a four-stroke carburetor is a little different. Let's focus on the two-stroke. And it, it doesn't matter. It could be a steel, Echo, Poulon, Husqvarna. These are all going to be running similar carburetors. But you need a different tool to adjust them. All right. All right, so let's first talk about what they are okay this is a carburetor it's a two-stroke carburetor can be found on chainsaws weed eaters trimmers you name it these are all different ones this is like for the ms series uh 170s and 180s you know not sure what that these are brand new ones that i pulled this is a used one these are tools that you use and then this here is how you can read the RPM of the engine, okay? Most of us can do it by ear, but this will give you a lot better results. It's not needed. All right, so let's first talk about serviceable versus non-serviceable. What is a serviceable carburetor? And all that means is it's a carburetor that you can adjust the high-low jets on. Simply put, you can service it so that you can make it run better just by adjusting the low and the high speed jet and the non-serviceables are the ones that are coming through that may have the port part way drilled but they're non-serviceable there's nothing there that no matter what you do there's no way you're going to change that carburetor so it's either it's going to work or it's not going to work and if you tear it down and go through it, you know, might be a diaphragm getting weak, you know, might be leaking somewhere, you know, a hole in the diaphragm, I've seen that before. But if you do all that and it still doesn't run right, you're kind of SOL. You know what that means, right? Out of luck. All right, so let's take a look at a, a regular serviceable carburetor, all right? On this carburetor, you're going to see three different adjustments. You're going to see the big screw here. Let me bring it up to you. The big screw here, that's your idle. That is just to, when it's sitting there purring, if you want to speed it up or slow it down, this is how you do it. And then down here, you have the low jet and the high jet. And you have a special tool, a lot of times the Chinese are sending them right with it, that this one's got like a pin prick, but you got to turn it lightly and it will drop into place once you know that it's there. And then you can adjust one direction or the other. The same thing with the high on this carburetor uses this particular tool. Now, what I can tell you is for each different make, <laughs> they're making a different tool. So, a lot of times you'll get 
and set with carburetors but I went ahead early on and I bought a kit I added it to what I already had and a funny story here as a dealer I'm allowed to have two of each per year one for a mechanic and one for me I guess but that's the max and if you're caught selling these it could be up to a ten thousand dollar fine or more punishable because the EPA doesn't want you adjusting the carburetors unless you have the background and the knowledge how to. And I agree with that for the most part. But I don't believe in others telling you how you can and can't do it if you're a homeowner. If you bought that saw, that's your saw to use however you want. If you want to take a sledgehammer to it, knock yourself out. But on this, when you're, serve, when you're trying to adjust this, we're going to start, if it's not idling good, we're going to start with the low jet. And it's going to have an L right there on this side. So you're going to want to drop that tool right on it so that it goes in easy. And while that's idling, you could turn it counterclockwise and that opens it up so that it gives more fuel. Or if you go clockwise, it will lean it out. But this can only be done while it's idling. All right. If you're revving the saw, it's, it's, you're screwing up what you're trying to accomplish. The low is just simply for idle. If you're trying to get it to where it idles good, it idles good so that the set screw here, if your idle screw is set too high, you may have to back that down. All right. But this is only good when you're working on your idle. Now, when you start trying to rev a saw or a weed eater or something like that, and it bogs down, a lot of times it's starving for gas. So again, let the tool find its slot. And then if you go counterclockwise, you're going to get more fuel into that port. Or you can go clockwise and lean it out. Now, I've been asked, you know, I see you taking these jets out so that you can spray them in there. How do you know where to put them back in? And there's two different thoughts on this, okay? One is, before you take it out, mark somewhere on with a, I call it a stick pen, a marking pen, whether it's white or something, so you know. And then go counterclockwise, how many turns you have to go to get it to where it fits up snug. Don't crank on it. It's up to snug. And then take it all the way out, and then when you put it back in, you take it all the way into where it's snug, and then back it out however many turns. Now, an old timer taught me, just take them out, clean them all up, put them back in until they're snug, and then take one full turn and a quarter on your low and your high. That will get you where you can adjust it. It will keep it running enough to adjust it from there. And that's work for us. On the non-serviceable ones, see this one's even got a low and a high, but there's no jets in there to adjust. So hopefully I haven't confused you any more than... <laughs> but you can get these tools on Amazon. I'm not affiliated with anybody. Anything you see that I have, you know, come out of my own pocket. If you want to get higher tech and you don't trust your ears or you're trying to save your hearing, these come in handy. And these are touchless, so I can just come up close to the chainsaw and it will tell me whether I've got to turn it in to lean it out clockwise or open it up to get more fuel in. So on that note, guys, you guys have a great day. And thanks so much for watching and supporting the channel.